So, limit state method of design of RCC structure. Today's topic is loads, which we are going to be considered in design calculation when any RCC structure member you are going to design. So, let us uh, go through the details. Now, what are the loads which we are going to consider? So, first of all, the determination of various type of loads which a structure may experience during lifetime as well as combination of loads which are required to be decided based on the probability occurrence in the light of guidelines suggested in standard. So what is the purpose of uh, or what it indicates that whenever you are going to design a structure that means you will be going to do some calculations based on which you will be able to just work out the cross-section as well as the material requirement type of material etc so all the information we are going to analyst in case of design calculations as well as the drawings which will be the supporting the design <coughs> now various type of loads which any structure will be expected to be experiencing during its lifetime so that means we are not uh, aware or we are not uh, we can't say exactly what will be the load which a structure will be going to encounter so that means based on the probability based on the probability of occurrence we will be going through first of all assuming the various type of loads based on the geographical region where the building is to be located and all the other parameters which we may later on take into consideration so there may be various type of loads so during design we have to take into consideration combination of loads later on you will be able to understand that what is the meaning of combination of loads and all these loads are based on the probability of occurrence and with this probability of this information we will be taking care with the help of the IS guidelines that means Indian standard codes the probability that a specific load will be exceeded during the life of a structure usually depend on the period of exposure that means the life of the structure whether that uh, specific load any type of load can exceed its limits which we have taken into consideration while designing of the structure it depends on the exposure of the structure how much lifetime you are uh, going to be expecting for a particular structure when you are going to design as well as the magnitude of the design load then load need to be considered in design calculation they depend upon the location as well as type of the structure such as you even you are going to consider wind load when you will be taking consideration of the wind load in the design calculation that depends on whether the structure is located in a such type of area or such type of zone where wind load are expected to be predominant as well as similarly we can talk about the earthquake load whether earthquake load is to be considered that depends on the geographical region of the area where you are going to be constructing the building or any structure which you are going to design so what load you have to take into consideration that depends on the various factor that means what is the type of the structure suppose there is a tower type of structure that means having a greater height then definitely wind load uh, may be affecting it but if you are uh, just uh, going to construct a building just as a residential maybe single story double story you may ignore the wind load criteria uh, depending on the location also now in the limit state of uh, uh, design method that means loads so first of all we will be discussing what is the dead load 
so now let us go through the information dead load is the load which can be considered as fixed in magnitude and the position and that type of load will be termed as dead load and this dead load you can assume based on the assumed dimension that means when you are going to design any suppose a rcc beam so first of all you are not having information regarding the cross section dimensions of the beam so first of all in the design methodology in design steps you will be going to assume uh, some value for the uh, cross section dimensions of the beam so let uh, according to the assumed dimensions you may be working out that what will be the self weight of that particular uh, beam or that section so accordingly that to load which is which you consider that it is a fixed <coughs> in magnitude and position you will be considering or you will be terming it as a dead load and uh, its calculation can be as i told will be depending on the dimensions which you have assumed as well as the material of the structure which you are going to under design whether it is concrete whether it is steel or any other type of material so based on the unit weight of that material and uh, dimensions of that material you will be able to work out an assumption for the dead load now here we will be taking help of uh, is 875 part 1 that is code of practice for design loads other than earthquake for building and structures so that means if you are going to design any building or structure and you are uh, not considering in your calculation the earthquake load that means the building is not in any earthquake zone uh, where earthquake is frequently occurring so for that you can refer if are your calculations the guideline mentioned in is 875 part 1 so uh, what uh, is 875 part 1 it is for that load and you can collect the information regarding unit weight of building material and stored material now this is uh, just a snapshot from the is 875 part 1 just to illustrate what actually information how actually we can get the information from the is code so this is yet 875 part 1 1987 version just for illustration purpose so you can go through the table number one <coughs> and the table number will give the information regarding unit weight of building materials and now you see here if you are building material is a cement concrete it may be pre-stress or it may be reinforced so that means when you are going to be uh, using cement concrete as the material <coughs> then unit weight will be taken as 2400 kg per meter cube so by this information that means is better you are taking the unit kilonewton then it will be 23.5 but in normally we will be taking unit as kg per meter cube then you can take 2400 as kg per meter cube unit unit weight of the cement concrete accordingly uh, other type of information is available in this table number one i have just taken uh, little bit of information just for the illustration purpose. <coughs> now second type of load which are uh, prominent in case of uh, structures or uh, buildings which we are going to be designed later on that is imposed load now what are imposed load they are also gravity loads other than dead loads which may include item such as, such as occupancy of people that means later on the structure will be occupied by people so their load which is movable load can be considered as imposed load <laughs> earlier it was uh, called as a live load so any equipment equipment which uh, you can consider that it can be movable not fixed furniture within the building movable material which is stored such as books machinery whatever we so uh, imposed load means it is a live load and uh, that load can be removed that means it is a movable it is not a fixed type of load 
So that type of load will be termed as imposed load. Earlier it was already told that it was termed as light load. Now there uh, are different type of uh, buildings. So these type of imposed load may be different for different type of building as per their use or as per their purpose for which they are built. Second point which we can take into consideration they are generally considered as static load for convenience of calculation. There may be a little bit of dynamic effect of uh, imposed load also but for calculation for the simplicity of the calculation we are not going to take into consideration that dynamic behavior. So you can consider while designing while doing the design calculations so dead load as well as imposed load they both are taken as static loads. Indian standard code provides uniformly distributed loads as well as concentrated load for various occupational categories. So you can refer the Indian standard codes for various type of category of loads. The distributed and concentrated imposed load shall be considered separately and the design carried out for the most adverse conditions. So here will you will be come across the term combination of load later on. That means when you are going to design a structure, you have to take the combination of load and you have to follow that combination of load which is going to offer most adverse condition so that our structure should be designed for adverse possible conditions which may happen during its lifetime. Now refer here, this is uh, IS-875 part 2. Now this code gives you the guideline and the title of the code is Code of Practice for Design Loads Other than Earthquake for Building and Structures. So in this IS-875 part 2, you can refer table number 1 and table number 1 is for imposed floor loads for different type of occupancies. Now see here, you can refer here, they have enlisted some, uh, listed the occupancy types. Now if there is a residential type of building, it may be a commercial type of building. So accordingly UDL as well as concentrated load value, you can take for your design calculation. As they have mentioned, uh, just a snapshot, a little bit information. Uh, dwelling houses, all room and kitchens, you can take UDL as 2 kN per meter square as well as 1.8 kN for concentrated load. Now you can see here the unit system you have to take because it is concentrated load so it is unit will be kilonewton and when there is UDL uniformly distributed load then a unit will be kilonewton per meter square. So IS 875 part 1 we refer for the dead loads and IS 875 part 2 we will be referring for the imposed type of uh, loads for building and structure here you have to be clear that no earthquake consideration will be taken. For earthquake type of loads, you have to refer a special code that is IS 1893. And uh, maybe in during our design theory, which we will be going through later on, earthquake type of load may not be considered. Now let us uh, briefly discuss about the combination of the loads. So as per IS 456 recommendations, Code has given these three type of combination of loads, dead load plus imposed load. <coughs> that means whatever be the dead load and imposed load, first of all you will be adding them and you will be working out some quantity. Then second will be dead load plus wind load or earthquake load. So it is uh, very much sure from the past experience that whenever there is a uh, high wind velocity, uh, wind is blowing with high velocity, then possibility of earthquake is negligible. So that means they both type of loads need not to be considered simultaneously. Either you can consider wind load or you can consider earthquake load. Third type of combination of load is dead load plus imposed load and plus wind load. So when you are going to do the calculation for various type of combination and uh, whatever be the adverse type of load or you can say highest 
uh, value of the load that will be considered for the design purpose.